Hey guys, welcome back and thanks for joining me. I'm your host, Sherry. This podcast is going to be a little shorter than others. Today I'm going to talk to you about The Piano Man. This is a story that caught my attention back in 2005. I've never forgotten this story and I hope you guys enjoy it. This is the case of The Piano Man. On April 5th, 2005, in Kent, England, a young man is seen at night, and he's walking along the beach, and he appears lost and appearing to have no real purpose for being out there. He's wearing an expensive black suit, and it was soaking wet. The tags were cut out of his clothing. The shoes he was wearing had all identifiable marks removed as well. The police walk over to him and ask him who he is and why he's out here strolling around in this wet business suit. The police assume he came out of the water. The young man doesn't speak to the officers and appears really nervous. They can't really arrest him for anything because it's not against the law to walk around in wet clothes and not speak to anyone. But the officers know something is up with this guy. He's taken to Medway Maritime Hospital in Gillingham, England. He won't answer any of the hospital staff's questions. He won't speak at all. He won't give his name, his story, anything. No talking. He's also very nervous and shy. He's taken to the mental health ward section in a different building where he would stay for several months. He's thought to be between the ages of 20 and 30. So one of the nurses gives him a notebook and a pen and asks him to write his name or something about him that would clue them into who he was. They want to reach his family. So the young man doesn't write his name. He instead draws a detailed sketch of a grand piano. So they arrange to have a piano brought to him. The hospital staff said that he played Tchaikovsky and songs ranging from Beethoven to the Beatles. He sat there and played for four hours. Finally, the staff take him back to his ward on the mental health unit. For several months, he he still doesn't speak. He doesn't indicate anything about who he is. He's displaying a lot of signs that he's suffering from some kind of severe disorder, one that would make him mute, and there's signs of major anxiety. They bring in different interpreters, French, Spanish, and German. They all try talking to him to see if they can get through to him in perhaps his native language. Remember, they don't even know what country he's from. They just found him along the beach in England. All they really know about this guy is that that he can play the piano really well. So they contact dozens of orchestras around Europe to see if anyone's missing a pianist. No one said they knew him. So they put his face out there locally in town to see if anyone could identify him. And there were over 800 tips that came in, but none could correctly identify who this man was. The media referred to him as Piano Man. The doctors are trying to figure out exactly what kind of mental illness they're dealing with, so they think he's got some severe post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD, as well as autism, because cases of autism can include a person who is extremely talented at a very specific skill, but doesn't communicate well with others, even as far as staying silent. So they realize he's in good health physically, but they can't get into his head to figure out what his diagnosis is because he won't talk. They also checked to see if his vocal cords had been removed. They speculated that maybe he had fallen from a boat into the sea, which caused an injury to his neck, which could have caused vocal cord paralysis. They also noted that they couldn't come within a few feet of him without him getting frightened. A social worker at the hospital contacted the Daily Mail, which is a major newspaper in London. They tell the reporters they have this unknown man at the mental ward in section of the hospital. He can't talk and no one knows who he is or where he's from, but he can play the piano really well. The newspaper sends in one of their photographers to get his picture. Well, taking his picture would be hard. He's extremely anxious and doesn't want to be photographed. But they know Piano Man like to take walks around the courtyard every day while being supervised by the staff the whole time. So they wait till it's time for his walk and the photographer snaps two photos of him. In one of them, he's hiding his face. They also give the photographer his notebook. He looks through the notebook and sees the detailed sketch of the grand piano and the rest of the book was just little lines and doodles, nothing of interest that would help the case. 
So the Daily Mail decides they're not going to run this story. They're afraid he is an asylum seeker who arrived in England and it could be harmful for him to have the media attention. So the photographer who took Piano Man's photo takes the images to a different newspaper where they published a small article about him. Well, this huge media storm takes over. Everyone is suddenly interested and wants to know the identity of the Piano Man. The story just blows up. I live in the United States, and I remember seeing it on the nightly news. Piano Man's photo was listed on the UK's Missing Person website. They also note that his hair is starting to grow slightly, and it's not coming in as blonde. They can see dark roots starting to show. So it was obvious his hair had been dyed very recently. Leads start coming in, hoping to identify Piano Man. Thousands of them, and the police have to go through each tip individually. The tips seem to be pretty credible. At least some of them did. I mean, there's literally thousands of them. And out of those thousands, I mean, if you can get 100 good ones, then you're making some progress. There is a mime artist in Italy that said that Piano Man was a street performer in Rome, and his name is Stephen Masson. He knows him because he's a street performer himself, and he sees him all the time. Stephen Masson ended up being located at his house, so it was ruled out that he was Piano Man. Two separate musicians call in and give the same name. They both said this man is 100% Tomas Strenad. One of the men said he knows it's him because they used to play in a concert band together and Tomas was their keyboard player. This was confirmed not to be the correct person, even though Tomas and Piano Man were very similar in appearance. One reason it wasn't true was one of the men said they just ran into Tomas on April 10th and they talked for a while. Well, Piano Man was first picked up on April 7th, so that would have been three days after Piano Man was already in the mental ward Um, mental health ward of the hospital. But at the end of the day, it's not the same guy. An Italian TV station plays a video that had a pianist in the orchestra, and this pianist and piano man were very similar in appearance. Their hair was different from each other, but the footage was from five years earlier. They did look a lot alike, but the and the also the the pianist didn't speak, so people had said you know this has to be piano man. This guy doesn't talk and he looks just like him, but it wasn't. In July, a tip comes in from some college students in Norway. They said he was an exchange student from Ireland named Dominic. They're like, wait, this is the guy that was in our class and no one's seen him in a while. The police were able to contact this exchange student Dominic, and now they know he's not piano man. Another tip comes in that Piano Man's name is Philip Stoffen, and he was last seen in Canada a few years before when he came into a Toronto emergency room and he was suffering from amnesia. The tags had been removed from his clothes and he had no ID. The similarities are a lot like Piano Man's situation, but Philip actually talked and spoke multiple languages. He just had amnesia. His identity was eventually discovered. It was determined that he was not Piano Man. A woman calls in and says, this is my husband. He left back in February to visit his family in Algeria, and I haven't seen him since. I can see that he's dyed his hair blonde, and he's lost about 50 pounds, but I know this is him. It ended up not being him in the end. So the hospital staff show Piano Man a map of the whole world, and he points to one location, Oslo, Norway. So they bring in a Norwegian-speaking person, and Piano Man begins to show excitement, and he even smiled, but he still wouldn't speak. They do some research, and they find out that a Norwegian ship was in the area around the time Piano Man was found wandering the streets, but nothing else comes from this. NBC's Dateline ran a story about Piano Man, and his face is now all over the place. Who is this guy? Why can't he talk? The mystery is deepening as the months pass. On August 22nd, 2005, four months after Piano Man was picked up, a nurse comes in to give him his breakfast and sit with him just like every other day. And she says to him again, are you going to talk to us today? Piano Man looks at her and as clear as day says, yes, I think I will 
Well, holy shit. The nurse runs and gets her coworkers and the doctors, and they're all standing there astounded that Piano Man spoke. This was a man they've been taking care of daily for months, and now they can hear his voice for the first time. They thought Piano Man was going to be there forever, but he just spoke, and now maybe they can figure out who he is. Piano Man tells the staff his name is Andreas Grassel. He is 20 years old. He said he is from Germany and he is gay. He had come to England on a train after he lost his job. He was planning on committing suicide when the police found him walking on the beach. He was in a distressed state and chose not to speak and decided to continue the act of not speaking and having a psychological disorder. He says he used to work in a mental institution and he knew exactly how to mimic the behaviors of patients. He knew all their symptoms and exactly how to portray himself so people would think something is wrong with him. He also knew that when people were speaking to him, he had to fixate on their face or inappropriately stare, which could be seen as a sign of autism. He even had the senior doctors at the facility fooled. So you guys understand now, Piano Man is a fraud. He is a man from Germany whose name is Andreas. For months, he made everyone believe he was this mentally ill man who couldn't speak, and he had this extraordinary talent. Well, he faked the entire thing. So the facility arranged to have him flown back to Germany, where he would be reunited with his parents, who are farmers, and his two sisters. The facility that Andreas spent all those months at release a statement saying he is no longer in their care, he was discharged, and they have no further involvement, and no other information would be released. The Daily Mail interviews Andrea's dad, and his dad says his son is not a fraudster. He said his son is mentally ill. Andreas told his family he has no idea what happened, and one day he just realized who he was. His dad said he was just experiencing a four-month-long psychotic episode. His dad also expressed that he was angry that Andreas was being portrayed as a fraud. He said his son would never make up something like this. I'm wondering this whole time why his parents didn't recognize his face that was plastered all over the world. Well, his parents stated that Andreas told him told them he was going to go study in France for a year. They did report him missing after not hearing back from him for some time because Andreas did have a cell phone and they were talking to him about once every two weeks. People could text message back in 2005, but it's not like it is today. Messages had to be very small, and you couldn't really send pictures. If you did, they had to be super tiny images. This is before iPhones, and computers weren't always a household item. I guess because they're German farmers, they aren't on the Internet and using technology like a lot of us do. His father stated, we are old and we have no time on the farm for reading newspapers and watching the news. We don't even take vacations. They had no idea their son was a part of this worldwide mystery. They admitted that they did see his picture on the news once, but they didn't recognize him because his hair was platinum blonde and he wasn't wearing his glasses. They didn't even think that maybe the man on TV could be Andreas. His father also adamantly denies that his son is gay, but this could also be a father who just wants to believe that his son isn't gay and is chalking it up to mental illness. The locals in Andreas' town state that homosexuality is shunned there and that Andreas' family were strict Catholics. Andreas' friends state that he used to spend long hours in chat rooms online. His username was Scatman. Chat rooms used to be really popular back in the early 2000s. Now we just have social media. Andreas was also a columnist for a local newspaper and wrote about pop music. It's never been publicized if Andreas was sued for all the time, money, and resources spent trying to figure out his identity. I'd imagine there's going to be some kind of lawsuit, but I'm sure it would be difficult with having two different countries. I don't know where Andreas is today. I did find a Facebook page with his name, but I don't know if it's him. It's private, and there's no photos of him or his location listed. There's just a photo of a piano. That's it for this week. Let me know your thoughts on Piano Man, and I'll see you guys next week. Take care, and as always, much love to you all.